Many farm animals like these pigs are monitored by computers. These sows are hopefully pregnant. The sow is pregnant for 3 months, 3 weeks and 3 days. That's about 114 days. The farmer scans them with this mini computer called an ultrasound scanner to see if they are pregnant. Can you see the outline of the baby pigs on the scanner? There's one there, there's one there. Two right together. Once he knows they are pregnant, then the farmer will monitor what they eat. This is done with a computer. As the sows go into this feed station, the computer reads their special ear tag and then gives them the amount of food the farmer has told the computer they need for the particular stage of their pregnancy. Perhaps your mum should fit one of these to you so that she can check that you're eating a healthy diet. Computers are even used to help farmers feed cattle while they are housed. The farmer mixes them a diet in this feed mixer and can tell how much of each ingredient to add thanks to the computer showing him the weight as the ingredients are added. These beef cattle are being fed a diet which has been made to help them grow and be healthy. Computers are even used in milking parlours. The white stuff. Six million of these are sold in the UK each day. Some of it drunk by you. That's enough milk to fill 41 swimming pools. Milk usually comes from cows, but it can also come from sheep or goats. Animals kept for milk are referred to as dairy animals. Cows which produce milk are usually black and white and either the Frisian or Holston breed. Do you know how milk is produced and gets into the cartons? Cows eat mainly grass which they turn into milk. Each cow can produce 20 litres of milk, that's this many containers in one day. Dairy animals are milked daily, sometimes two or three times a day. They go into a milking parlour to be milked. Some milking parlours are like a roundabout, like this one where goats are being milked. When animals first enter the milking parlour, the farmer cleans their rudders. This is to help stop bacteria getting into the milk. Milking does not hurt the cows, in fact cows are happy to be milked as they can get rid of the weight of the milk in their udders. Could you carry these around all day? Some cows even start to release milk before the farmer has put the milking machine on. Once the udders are clean, the farmer then continues with the milking process. This is called the milking cluster is put on the animal's udder and gently squeezes the milk out.
milk produced by each animal is carefully measured and recorded by a computer so that they can be fed the correct amount of extra food. The cows are then fed a diet which keeps them healthy and accounts for how much milk they have produced. Once all the milk has been squeezed out, the cluster releases automatically and the animal leaves the parlour. The milk goes into a special cooling tank where it will be stored until it is picked up by a tanker lorry. We will see what happens to the milk in another program. The seeds for your summer vegetables are being planted now. The seeds are planted into a compartment in these trays by this machine. This is tomato seed, pelleted in clay to make handling of such small seeds easier. The planter machine puts one pelleted seed in each compartment. The seeds are then covered in a special material called vermiculite. And then put in a germination room where the conditions are controlled to help the seeds germinate. After three days the trays are moved to the greenhouse and the seedlings emerge. Once the seedlings are growing strongly they are sorted according to size. This is done by a computer and robot into small, medium or large plants. The robot picks each plant up and places it in a pot for the computer to take a picture of. The computer then controls where each plant goes and instructs the robot to pick these sorted plants up and put them on the relevant tray. Sorting them by size helps the grower produce the most even crop of healthy strong plants. The small ones can be grown on longer before the next stage. Once they reach the right size, the plants are pricked out into larger rock wool pots, which are soaked with water first. The pricked out plants are put back in the greenhouse to grow some more. As they grow, the plants take up more space, so they are spaced out so that they do not have to compete for the light which makes them grow. This is what these girls are doing here.
First today we are going to be following I would see how the changes for the seasons and how would manage just like the rest of our countryside. Here's the wood we will be following this year. You may think our woods are very quiet and nothing much is happening in winter. Well certainly some trees have lost their leaves so cannot make their own food by photosynthesis. The trees which do lose their leaves are called deciduous trees. Lots of things are happening which are important for the new spring leaves and growth in the wood. The leaves which cover the wood floor are under attack from many beasts, fungi and bacteria. This attack means the nutrients which are locked up in the leaves are released into the soil. They are being recycled. If you take a walk in the woods, you may see some of the fungi which break down the leaves and other dead plant material. If you collect some of the leaves, you could hunt for a wound to find some of these mini beasts. 